So Victron Energy, they sell a battery capacity monitor shunt and it works great. I love the company, but it costs $200 and all it does is tell me how much power is in my battery. It measures at the battery with the shunt how much power goes into the battery and how much power comes out. And it will measure the exact amount of power that you have available in your battery at any given moment. But it's $200. So I've never actually bought one of these things because I just don't want to spend $200 telling me how much power is in my battery it's just I don't think that it's worth it and the only reason I need to even estimate the capacity of my batteries is so that I can turn off loads when the battery is nearly depleted and I can do that with a voltage very easily but this week I found a $30 Chinese battery capacity shunt monitor and we are going to install it and test it out and I think you guys are gonna love it because it's way cheaper than any other option on the market I mean literally $30 versus $200, they do the same thing, but the big difference is the Victron connects to your phone with Bluetooth, but I don't really need that. I just wanna see a number and be done with it. And for $30, I'll totally do that. So yeah, let's test this thing out. That's what guys, tired of spending 200 or more dollars for a battery capacity monitor? China has created a $30 shunt rated to 100 amp. And this is all it comes with, it has a shunt, one cable and the monitor display nice little manual and a mount honestly this feels like the cheapest plastic in the world this mount is very strange i'm not sure if i'm using it right i attach the monitor to the shunt with the provided cable and there's an extra little cable that you need to attach here to provide it with power the small little terminals and then of course the large terminals for the negative connection that we attach to the battery. Reading the instructions, it looks like we only need to provide it with one of the terminals with a positive power wire. It does not have that included, so you need to provide your own tiny wire. With my new system, I can easily mount a shunt between the main battery cable and the negative bus bar. And I just realized that it has an adhesive backing. I just removed this so you can stick it and then screw it, but there are no screws provided with this kit. Actually, there is no adhesive backing. It seemed like it, but I just felt it and there's nothing on it. Something I realized is that if you mount it like a traditional shunt, you can't access these wires at all. It's very difficult. So what you should probably do is mount it like this. Also, there's directionality. The P goes to your loads or to your charging source and the B goes to the battery cable. So it needs to probably go like this. So here it goes, guys. Don't want to hurt it. So this is a size 14 wrench to take this off of here. And I just crimped this tiny wire to connect the shunt to the bus bar. Whoops. God damn, I forgot. That was an accident. Should have been expecting that. I notice when tightening these bolts down is that this case, this plastic is what holds these bolts. So if you over torque this, you could crack this case. So be very careful with that. I connected a 14 gauge red wire and we are going to supply it with power with the load terminal on my solar charge controller. I also use this load terminal for this automatic transfer switch. I like this because there's a 20 amp circuit breaker and these wires are so short and small and I don't want to wire up another fuse so this works well for that but I don't like using these load terminals for anything else. And after putting the wire into the terminal we actually have power here. I'm not sure where I want to mount it yet, so I'm just going to put it on top of the automatic transfer switch and we'll mess with the settings right here. After I connected the solar power wire to the charge controller, it shows that it's charging. My god, these instructions are very difficult to read. TR16 is a kind of high precision current type battery capacity tester. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And you can see the accuracy of this thing. You have like one, two, three decimal points of accuracy. Right now it's showing the current amount of amps going into the battery, but if you press it again, it will show the total amount of amp hours. Right now it's a very cloudy, rainy day, so we have practically no power coming in. If you press the V on the far left, it will show you the current voltage. And then when you press percent, it will tell you the battery percentage. And this is what we need to set up next. After reading the manual, I figured out that we need to set the 0% state of charge voltage. And to set this thing up, you need to press the V first, and then you're in voltage mode. And then you press A and amp hour, and you hold it for three seconds. 
And now you need to set this to your lowest voltage that the battery will experience. In my case, my automatic transfer switch goes down to 24.9. So I'm going to put this to 24.9. And then you press the A amp hour, and then it will set the voltage. Last step is to tell this battery monitor what zero battery is. So we need to discharge this battery all the way down, and then we'll go into a new setting mode and then set it. Hey guys, we are discharged to 24.2 volts, and now we need to set the 0% capacity extent threshold. So what we do is press the middle button, and we hold down the V. I think I did it. It's the next day, and we have some sunshine, and it's charging. Honestly, it's actually working. This is so cool to see. I love it. So right now, my system is producing almost a kilowatt of continuous power, and this thing is charging right up. And this is with a 1200 watt array in March, so that's pretty substantial. I was just reading the instructions and all I have to do is reset the zero as we did. We don't have to set 100% capacity because it will figure it out on its own. So we already set this thing up and that agrees with the results that we have. It says it's 96% and we have 95 amp hours because these are 100 amp hour batteries. So this is accurate. It's already set up. All we had to do was set zero and it will do everything else for us. All right, guys, this is how I'm mounting it. I know some people will criticize me for it, but I like the look of this. And yeah, the shunt is completely installed. I just need to secure these wires so they look good. But yeah, it's all done. Isn't this great? I love it. So what do you guys think about this battery capacity monitor? I love it so much. And I'm going to test it on my system for the next couple months. And if there is anything wrong, I will let you guys know. And now that it's so cheap, I'm going to recommend everybody put it on their system. I mean, 30 freaking dollars. That is so cheap. It's nuts. I mean, even having a one way shunt for measuring how much power is going into your battery and not out of your battery, those cost $18. But for 30 bucks, it measures it both ways and does all the math. Like that's such a good deal. Sometimes in the YouTube comments, people were like, why don't you have a battery capacity monitor? I was like, I don't want to spend 200 freaking dollars. But now I have one and I didn't spend much at all. Let me know what you guys think about this thing. And if you guys get one, please let me know what your results are. They were great for me, but if they don't work for you, let me know in the comment section after you buy it. But the reviews were good. It works for me. So I think, yeah, I can recommend this thing. And at this price point, I think it's going to make a lot of people happy. I so yeah, I'll talk to you guys later and see ya.